Hello people, let us look at uh, retinoblastoma. We have looked at this topic in pathology, but let us look at it in ophthalmology, what and all they are explaining. So some additional points are there. Um, so this is the most common ocular tumor of childhood. So it is a common malignant tumor. Remember this red word here. It's a malignant tumor arising from neurosensory retina. From where is it arising guys? From the neurosensory retina in one or both eyes it can be there. Okay. So from where does it arise? From yeah, neurosensory retina. It's written here. From the retinal neurons which are very good people actually. So these are what are they saying here? Neurosensory retina. Okay. So what should you know here? This is the most common. So you should know this and it can affect one or both eyes. So usually they will present around uh, 1.5 years and uh, usually the children will be less than 4 years of age. Okay. And what else you should know here? 60% uh, are sporadic. It just happens. 40% is familial. If it is familial, usually it will be bilateral. Okay. And um, it is autosomal dominant. The RB gene which is on chromosome 13 which is a very good uh, gene right that has got affected. It's a tumor suppressor and the good gene has got affected. Okay. Focus on this. It is on the 13 Q. Unlucky 13th chromosome. That is where this RB gene and it has got affected now. The thing is this retinoblastoma is so common and it can lead to death because of metastasis via optic nerve etc. So you should be very careful about it. So there is something called as Knudsen's two hit hypothesis. So two hits are required. Two mutations are required. Right. So both the uh, inactivation or deletion of both of the normal alleles of this protective gene results in the occurrence of retinoblastoma. So how many chromosomes 13 uh, like this is chromosome 13 let's say on its long arm right on the 14th band you have this RB gene and now this gets affected you will have two alleles so both should get affected so here they have shown you 22 like this you will have 22 more so how many 13 uh, chromosome we'll have we'll have two cro 13 chromosomes right and on this there will be RB gene both the alleles should get affected this is much better. Look at this. 13, they have shown 2. So both the alleles should have got affected, right? How's it going, people? What are we looking at? Retinoblastoma. Till now, what and all did we study? Malignant ocular tumor, common childhood, presentation, a less than 4 year child, most common presentation, 1.5 year around. It is uh, a retinal neuron. It is arising from retinal neurons from the neurosensory uh, retina. It can be familial, autosomal dominant, then it can be bilateral. Here, what is affected? The uh, RB tumor suppressor gene, which is on the 13th uh, chromosome, is affected. What happened? Okay. And uh, there is some Nudson two-hit hypothesis, which is there in this. These people are also at increased risk of developing other tumors like osteogenic sarcoma, especially the familial one looks like. This is the knee joint and where is osteogenic sarcoma in this right here? See, osteogenic sarcoma, it is in affecting the metaphysis. Right? What do you see? So, this is the femur, knee joint, osteosarcoma. These people are also prone to that. And also add one penialoblastoma. Okay? Penial, uh, they can have associated penialoblastoma. Okay? So, you should, uh, till now, what and all we finished, just let's see here. It is malignant ocular tumor. Arises from retinal neurons, RB uh, gene is on uh, chromosome 13, Knudsen to hit hypothesis, 40% uh, can be familial. Then uh, in that they can have osteogenic sarcoma, penialoblastoma, all this they can have. Now we are here, leukocoria. Okay. So why is this cat sitting here? These people have white pupillary reflex uh, like an amrotic that is blind cat's eye, um, blind cat's eye pupil. What is this? And this is the most common cause of leukocoria. Okay, retinoblastoma is the most common cause of this leukocoria, white pupillary reflex. What else can be there in these people? Features strabismus, that is squint can be there. Other than this, they will have pure, poor vision, painful red eye, etc. We are not going into the other uh, things. Okay, what are the other things anyways? Let's write here. Poor vision, painful red eye, the textbook says. Painful red eye. So red dye can cause can be there. Okay. So this much you can remember as the presenting features of retinoblastoma. We'll put that here. Presenting features 
of retinoblastoma. So remember that white reflex, that cat here. So we are uh, done with presenting features of retinoblastoma. So here, if these the, only this much is there, then it is called as <clears throat> some quiescent presentation. Okay, when there is no pain. If there is pain, then it will become painful presentation. So guys, what is the uh, age at pres um, around which the child will present? Less than four years. Yes. Now look at this. Um, whenever it grows into the vitreous, it will be endophytic. If it grows towards the uh, between between the retina and the pigment epithelium, that is within the layers of uh, retina, looks like that is called as exophytic. Okay. So if it is going growing inward to the vitreous, it is endophytic. It's growing between the layers of retina, it is exophytic. Okay. So look at this. This is endophytic, this is exophytic. You can see it is kind of between the layers of retina. So in gross, you will write this. What will you write in um, microscopy? So microscopy, you have to write this Flexner, Winter, Steiner, Rosettes. Rosettes, remember in RB, that is retinoblastoma, you have Flexner, Winter, Steiner, Rosette and also you can have Homer, Wright, Rosettes. Homer, Wright, Ro Rosettes seems to have something in the middle. So, and uh, Flexner seems to have nothing in the middle. That's what it looks like. Okay. So, this image will show clearly. Wait. Look at this. Homer Wright is at home. He has a lot of things, something inside. And this one is the Flexner. It has nothing inside, looks like. Okay. So, you have to remember this one. Flexner, Winter, Steiner, Rosette. This is what you're going to see in the microscope. You should also be able to see some necrosis and calcification, guys. Can you see any calcification type of thing here? They have shown some CT scans and all. Look, just see if you can spot anything. Guys, in gross, you know that it is creamy color, okay? So, in pathology, we have finished now. Gross, we looked at. Then, we have also looked at um, the microscope, okay? Now, let's move on. So, there is some grading. So, let us look at this. International classification of retinoblastoma, IC, RB. So, very simply, it is A, B, C, D, E. A is very low risk and E is very high risk. So, A is basically, they are saying less than 3 millimeter in greatest dimension, dimension, small tumors. Okay, it's confined to retina. There are a lot of other things you can look at that. Group B is low risk, they are saying it uh, greater than 3 millimeter. Okay, any size tumor, but if it is located less than 3 millimeter from fovea, less than 1.5 millimeter from optic disc margin. So, how close it is to fovea and optic disc margin seems to be the way they are grading here. Then you have moderate risk, high risk, very high risk. Moderate means they are saying some localized seeds. D is diffuse seeds, you can remember high risk. E is very high risk. Extensive retinoblastoma characterized by tumor touching the lens, neovascular glaucoma, tumor anterior to anterior vitreous face involving ciliary body, anterior segment. So many things. There are a lot of things here. Anterior chamber, thesis bulby, necrosis with aseptic orbital cellulitis, invasion of post laminar optic nerve. So behind also it could have grown, grown. choroid sclera orbit. So whatever possible they have written here. Group E very high risk, massive retinoblastoma. Okay, so if they ask if they ask you uh, international classification of retinoblastoma, A, B, C, D, E. That's it. Less than 3 millimeter, greater than 3 millimeter, how close it is to fovea, how close it is to optic nerve. Then local seeds, diffuse seeds, massive. So basically they are talking about some differential diagnosis. You should know the other causes of leukocoria. It can be congenital cataract, etc. Right? Uh, Coats disease, etc. They are saying. How will you examine the person under uh, anesthesia? Okay, they are saying full fundus examination you should do. Then uh, plain x-ray you should take. You should check the lactic dehydrogenase level in the aqueous humor. They are saying you should check that. Ultrasonography, M, uh, CT scan, MRI, you saw all those, right? So, all those you should do. What are they saying in diagnosis? So, we will write off very simply, okay? Plain X-ray, CT, MRI, ultrasound. All this you will write standard, okay? But examine under anesthesia, they are saying. Then they are saying, check LDH level if it is raised in aqueous humor. Okay. 
So guys, they are telling do direct and indirect ophthalmoscopy. Do it uh, with mydriasis uh, with atropine. So you will dilate the pupil. Then uh, measure the intraocular pressure, corneal diameter, and all you check. LDH level, this you may, may forget. LDH level is raised in aqueous humor. What is the significance of this LDH level in this retinoblastoma? Are they saying it's kind of a marker? Okay. Anyways, now we are done with diagnosis. We will move on to treatment, guys. Treatment, um, the textbook says there is conservative tumor destructive therapy. Then there is enucleation. Just remove the eyeball. Okay. Or palliative therapy. Three things they have given. Let us look at all the three. Okay. So where are we starting with? Conservative tumor destruction therapy. Is it becoming too much, guys? Just take a deep breath. We have finished most of it. We have to just look at the treatment. In treatment, what and all is there? Conservative. Okay. Then what could be there other than conservative? Enucleation. Remove the eyeball itself. Then after that, what are they talking about? Palliative therapy. So this is something like in spite of aggressive treatment, the prognosis for life is dismal. Looks very sad. Okay, now let us start off with this uh, treatment, uh, conservative tumor destructive therapy. You want to destroy whom? The tumor. So let's get started with destroying the tumor. So here they are talking about chemotherapy, which seems to be more systemic. IV, IV, they are talking about focal therapy means local, right? Focal, local, you seems to be going together here. So there you will do cryotherapy, laser photocoagulation, transpupillary thermotherapy. So guys, in this, they are talking about some multimodal therapy where they are planning to give both the chemo and uh, focal. Okay, they seem to like that where they are giving both chemo and focal. In chemo, you have something called a CVE, CVE regimen. Okay, that is carboplatin, vincristine, etoposide, etoposide. Say these names, guys. Carboplatin, vincristine, etoposide, CVE. Okay, this is going to be chemo reduction of retinoblastoma the tumor should reduce in size looks like the chemo reduction of retinoblastoma they are giving c v e say it c v e okay then focal therapy there's some standard dose and high dose okay in the c v e regimen there seems to be standard dose and high dose you can give high dose standard dose write that down if you want wait standard S T A N D A R D standard dose or you can give high dose it's very difficult to hold the textbook and type B. so guys for group a b c they are giving standard dose and for looks like for the other two d and d they will give high dose what do you say no for group d only they are giving high dose so e is not there here okay for group d only they are talking about high dose okay then i think e we saw here right E we saw here, enucleation group E, they are doing enucleation. So let's just go back here. We are looking at conservative therapy where they are just trying to uh, reduce the tumor in size. Okay. What is this? Chemo reduction they want to do, right? They want to reduce the size of the tumor. With what regimen? CVE regimen, carboplatin, vincristine, and etoposide. Okay. Uh, standard dose, high dose, two things. Now let us move on. What do you say? To focal therapy depending on the location and size they want to do focal therapy cryotherapy so you give nice co uh, uh, minus 40 to minus 100 isn't it that is what cryotherapy is do that and destroy the tumor so give very intense cold and destroy it or you give heat thermotherapy and uh, destroy the tumor or do laser photocoagulation to destroy the tumor you can use laser okay so did you understand this so there are some specific things they are telling. Okay, cryotherapy if the small tumor located anterior to equator. Laser photocoagulation is used for small tumor located posterior to equator. Thermotherapy is used. Um, this is with diode laser. This they are not using this word anymore. Thermotherapy with diode laser is used for a small tumor located posterior to equator away from macula. Then they have plaque radiotherapy, external beam radiotherapy. Let's write that also. Plaque radiotherapy and external beam radiotherapy so guys focal therapy there are lots at least remember these three cryotherapy laser photocoagulation chemotherapy what are you trying what are we trying to do destroy the retinoblastoma till group uh, uh, d we have finished the treatment now let us move on to group e guys we are moving to group e e nucleation it is the choice for uh, group e tumors so when do you call it as group E? 
tumor involves more than or wait group e let's go back and first read what group e is wait yeah we remember this extensive retinoblastoma any one of the following tumor touches the lens neurovascular glaucoma and uh, tumor anterior to anterior vitreous face involving ciliary body the anterior segment then diffuse infiltrating tumor opaque media with hemorrhage tumor necrosis with aseptic orbital cellulitis invasion of post laminar optic nerve choroid sclera orbit and anterior chamber of thesis bulbi so that is all the what indications for what for the enucleation and something else they are writing here tumor involves more than half of the retina okay it involves more than half of the retina optic nerve is now involved okay remember optic nerve also got involved and glaucoma is present anterior chamber is involved okay so what are they going to do here remove the eyeball okay and um, can you see these steps anyways enucleation separate videos there you can look at the steps so eyeball should be enucleated along with maximum length of the optic nerve this is very important maximum length of the optic nerve also you will remove okay and you should not perforate the eyeball if optic nerve invasion is there post operative treatment what and all you will give external beam radiotherapy chemotherapy same radiotherapy chemotherapy they are giving okay if they found that the optic nerve also invasion has happened again here they are talking about in chemotherapy what will they give carboplatin vincristine and etoposide cve okay they are combining with cyclosporin is that what is there in the latest version of textbook let's look yes same thing is there in the latest version of textbook the last thing guys palliative therapy palliative therapy what they are saying here is uh, prognosis for life is dismal in spite of aggressive treatment so when does this happen when the retinoblastoma with orbital extension retinoblastoma with intracranial extension wow and distant metastasis is occurring so all this if it is occurring it has gone beyond the eye looks like it's gone beyond the eyeball at least right eyeball and the optic nerve so orbital extension so what are they doing here they're giving same chemo radiation cve regimen right it up um, what is this cve carboplatin vincristine and etoposide treatment surgical debulking they are using a word bulking debulking of the orbit or orbital x enteration guys here what do they do they will remove the content of the orbit itself isn't it then they have external beam radiotherapy guys here we have shown an old person's photo actually for x enteration but remember retinoblastoma is in children less than 4 years right external beam radiotherapy so you're giving same thing chemo radiation radiotherapy and surgically you're removing the content of the orbit uh, the eyeball muscles etc so x enteration of the orbit um, a mutilating surgery this is because see the person how he looks mutilating surgery was performed in the past now it is not preferred then what do they do wait let's see what they do is it written here okay they didn't say what they'll do if they don't do this so they will try chemo radiation and radiotherapy is it okay so that completes uh, retinoblastoma just one more topic they have in the textbook called as prognosis let's look at this also what are they saying in prognosis if untreated the prognosis is bad and uh, the patient dies okay so sometimes it can spontaneously regress spontaneous regression can occur which is good right so spontaneously it can regress which is a very good thing but if it is not regressing untreated can cause death so you have to do enucleation if there is um, uh, you know before it can go outside the eyeball extraocular extension before that happens if you remove if you remove the eyeball enucleation if you do fair prognosis will be there but if optic nerve is involved and undifferentiated tumor cells massive choroid involvement then there will be poor prognosis okay that's all guys in retinoblastoma let's take a quick recap guys we will take a quick recap of this uh, retinoblastoma it is a, a common ocular tumor in children malignant it is and uh, less than 4 years uh, children usual presentation will be around one, uh, 18 months okay and it arises from where from the retinal neurons and here what is affected the rp gene which is a tumor suppressor tumor suppressor which is a very good thing which is present on the 13th chromosome okay here it is affected uh, there you should there is nudson's two hit hypothesis okay remember this nudson's two hit hypothesis 
if it is familial 40% can be familial autosomal dominant it is it can be bilateral these people can also have osteogenic sarcoma and penialoblastoma so here we are showing you osteogenic sarcoma how will they uh, this, this is a karyotyping we just saw where the chromosome 13 is so both the alleles should be affected to hit hypothesis nutson presenting features we saw quiescent uh, presentation leukocoria white pupillary reflex amorotic cat's eye pupil this is the most common cause of leukocoria strabismus squint can be the usually convergent squint pure vision all these are uh, without pain right painful can be there when they have glaucoma inflammation etc so this is a child white reflex leukocoria so gross we saw pathology there can be endophytic which is protruding into the vitreous exophytic when it is growing between the retina and the pigmented epithelium we saw that it is creamy uh, color okay creamy color so this is uh, endophytic this is exophytic some images and here there are some images of ct scan they are saying in x-ray and all you should be able to see calcification pathology we saw flexner winter steiner rosette fws fws flexner winter steiner rosettes homer right rosettes necrosis calcification then what did we see we saw that you should know the other causes of leukocoria like congenital cataract etc you should be able to differentiate then coming to diagnosis what and all you will check under the uh, anesthesia you will dilate the pupil and do direct and indirect ophthalmoscopy check the fundus you will measure the intraocular pressure corneal diameter why are they measuring corneal diameter because something is oh, for, for, for what reason okay ldh level is raised in aqueous humor in aqueous humor the ldh level is raised like a marker they are using it looks like then all the standard things diagnosis you will use investigation x-ray ct mri ultrasound good now coming to uh, international classification a b c d e a very low risk e very high risk okay so d is for diffuse seeds c is for local seeds very good so uh, treatment if it is uh, group a b c they are giving this uh, c v e regimen standard dose uh, c e c v e regimen for uh, group a b c if it is so what are you giving carboplatin vincristine etoposide high dose means they are giving only for group d okay they are also doing focal therapy they are going to use cryotherapy thermotherapy laser photocoagulation other things they are saying radiotherapy plaque radiotherapy external beam radiotherapy e nucleation they are doing for group e group e is uh, they are saying that it involves more than half of the retina optic nerve is involved glaucoma is present anterior chamber is involved and lot of other things that they have told how to classify it as group e right maximum length of uh, guys please read the textbook for more details on this okay uh, maximum length of eyeball sorry maximum length of optic nerve you should take so e nucleation you should mention this point how are you going to do e nucleation you're going to remove with the maximum length of the optic nerve and then you will check the optic nerve for invasion if the optic nerve is in, uh, uh, involved then you will give radiotherapy chemotherapy same uh, carboplatin vincristine etoposide uh, c v e regimen you will give you can combine it with cyclosporin okay so same cve only they are saying cve okay so whenever they ask you where does the cve regimen come you can say retinoblastoma palliative therapy if it is um, like prognosis for life is dismal they are actually doing x entration okay they are removing the eyeball uh, and the muscles looks like the entire content of the orbit they seem to have removed okay and here also they're talking about cve regimen chemo radiation radiotherapy okay then we saw prognosis spontaneous regression can occur if but if it's untreated and is progressing looks like a death fair prognosis if uh, it is enucleated before extraocular extension poor prognosis if optic nerve is involved undifferentiated tumor cells massive choroid involvement so that was the recap for you what did we look at in this video retinoblastoma bye bye